Hello and welcome to another episode of the Why We Travel podcast. Food is a big topic with every journey, with every travel, and most travelers are foodies. Going to new countries, trying out new food, big thing there. So today with me, I have someone who did this in a very, very special way, and it's a sweet story, and you will know why that is a sweet story in a moment. Sophia B is with me today, and she has done a trip to Europe back in 2017, where she explored cakes. So we want to dive into this right now, and I say hello to Sophie. Hi, Sophia. How are you today? Hello, I'm very good today and very excited to come here and talk about uh, cakes and travel. <laughs> Sophia, give me a bit of a background of yourself and what got you into traveling. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm by kind of nationality and heritage, I'm French Moroccan American, which means that I was born and raised in the US and from a French mom and a Moroccan dad. And um, I think my relationship to travel started pretty young um, just because of that multicultural background we would travel um, you know, during the summers or um, we would, yeah, I just remember being on a plane pretty early. Um, and I think also what multiculturalism does sometimes is it, it breeds this like intensified curiosity um, and this need for change a lot. Of, I, I really love change and diversity. So that kind of shaped my relationship to travel where basically staying in one place feels foreign to me in a weird way, right? It's like, I need to continuously go and explore. Um, and by the way, traveling can be something like a you know 10 hour flight away from home, or it can just be hopping in the car and driving 30 minutes outside to a different neighborhood. But it's kind of this idea of exploration and movement towards something that you don't know that I feel very connected to. Um, and yeah, and I also moved around through university and then just kind of whenever I'd have a spare time or spare change, uh, I would find a destination. Europe is great for that because we have these low cost airlines where you can just go to Dublin for $5. Um, yeah, so traveling is definitely a key part of, of my identity for sure. Okay, but do you see yourself more like a solo traveler, an adventure traveler? What kind of style of traveling do you prefer? Um, I, a little bit of all of the above. <laughs> Choice is not my forte. Um, I enjoy traveling alone because it means that I'm going to more easily like talk to people or I'll be, you know, independent and in charge of my time. And then at the same time, I also love going like with a friend. Group travel, not so much. Uh, weirdly enough, I organize travel retreats, but I don't, I wouldn't participate in them myself. Um, and I like to, you know, something that I often do when I'm arriving in a new city or a new place is like, I'll try to Google like insider tip. I'll try to look for like local blogs instead of, you know, maybe like the first Google results because I kind of, when I go to a place, I don't, I'm not going with this idea of, okay, I have a list of 20 things to see. I like to just walk around and see what the local lifestyle is like. Also, it's the same for food. Um, being able to just walk and see where, what places look full and what, places look full of locals is something that um really yeah excites me um but I think it's kind of a hybrid so it's also it's not like adventure travel either it's kind of leisurely everyday life traveling okay no it sounds great now back in 2017 you did a very interesting trip and you wrote like love mm -hmm. it's prey and meets Anthony <laughs> Bourdain which is one of my heroes so we're on yeah. the same page here. so what got you to the idea to go to Europe and <clears> do something <throat> Very special tell me about it the backdrop is uh myself and a friend annabelle who we had been to university together we were freshly graduated and um we were both kind of like rebuking the corporate lifestyle right i had gone to morocco to try to connect with my father's heritage and i was working in a guest house and annabelle i don't remember exactly what she was doing at the time but she was very much like what's my life about ah, <laughs> i don't want to just go in and integrate some traditional job so her and i were talking and we love desserts together we used to bake in university we would have these big baking afternoons and i think the conversation we were just like we wanted to promote again diversity um we we wanted to help spread awareness of like what's different because i think we're always focusing on like the differences but in a conflicting way right and so we had this curiosity of like what desserts what is a traditional dessert in Romania and I remember I think this I remember the conversation we were like well why don't we just go and discover it and then we thought well why just Romania why not all of Europe um and at the time the 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 kind of hitchhiking concept wasn't there we thought we were very young and irresponsible we thought that we would be able to save up in a few months and then go and do that with the car and that wasn't the case 
So when we got to like the date of departure for the trip, um, we just decided to wing it because ultimately we just really wanted to go and like, it, I always, whenever I talk about this, this trip, it boils down to curiosity and this a little bit of also naivete, right? Which is just like, it's like if right now after this call, I was just like, okay, I want to go to Mexico today, but I, it happens that I don't have a car right now and I'll figure it out. I'm just going to walk out the door and make it happen. But because there's something that's driving you, I, you know, aka the curiosity, you find ways to make that happen. And so, yeah, Annabelle and I were both obsessed with dessert. We both were very curious about what kind of desserts exist in, in Europe and also in the world, but we just started with the scale of Europe. Um, and also we wanted to open a, a bakery, like a coffee shop. So there was, a, there was also a business plan behind it of like, we're gonna go get these recipes and then we'll have this shop in which people can come and try desserts from all over different areas. Okay, so you said <laughs> Romania was one of the countries. Which other countries did you go to? We did eight. Hmm, we did eighteen countries in total. So if I can roll through them, pretty much in less than a minute, I think we started in France, went up through Belgium, Germany, Czech Republic, Poland, uh, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece. I'm definitely missing some in the way, but that's okay. Um, after Greece, kind of going up again the coast, so um, Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, we didn't stop, Croatia, Slovenia, Switzerland, Austria, Italy, there's, I haven't counted on my fingers, but that's kind of the, the tour. Okay, that covers quite a bit in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what is, what's your approach to find this, this specific dessert or cake? And obviously... Oh, it, it was so messy. We would just literally show up somewhere because also we're hitchhiking. So we don't really have, this is the thing with hitchhiking. Like you can, you can be very stuck and say, I'm trying to go there. That will limit your way of traveling. Whereas we were like, okay, we're trying to go to Greece. Greece is huge. So from there, we would land somewhere, arrive. And once we had figured out housing, because that's the other thing, we were sleeping in strangers' homes. We didn't really know where we'd stay. We would just talk to people on the street, honestly. Like, I, it's actually a really interesting question. Nobody's asked me this before, but um, Annabelle and I are, would be different in our approach. I tend to be, I want to control sometimes. So I would be like on Google looking traditional recipe of Bulgaria or something. And Annabelle was always very good at inviting me into like, there's probably a lot that we don't know that 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 the whole point of coming to see the locals and to learn the local recipe is like, you know, just trusting that we'll find what's really present here versus looking at Google and then saying, oh, but we found this recipe specifically and we're trying to make this. So towards, yeah, towards the middle end of the trip, we were just literally just, we'd show up. Like there's one time in Greece, we rallied almost the entire town we were just walking down these cobblestone streets and people were like who who makes that orange cake that's really good oh it's that girl okay where is she who makes that orange cake and we just found this girl who makes an orange cake that's very specific from the region because she blends an entire orange into the batter so she doesn't just put orange juice she takes the entire orange that's really ripe blends it into the smoothie maker and then it makes this kind of like paste and she puts that into the batter so you have a super like flavorful orange chocolate cake you know and those are things that like I wouldn't have found that on Google I wouldn't I would have found probably baklava or something yeah I think you had the right approach there, just winging it and just go for the flow and see what happens what's my yeah. approach to a certain degree there now obviously going somewhere and finding dessert is one thing and you just got a little bit into it but then getting the recipe out of, of someone to mm -hmm. take it with them I think that can be a different level of challenge there so how did you approach that uh, so my one belief on this is that, um, people want to help. So what it, it felt like a treasure hunt. Think of the way that children approach a treasure hunt. We weren't just coming in like, Hey, give us one piece of information. We're like, okay, tell us your favorite local dessert and then teach us how to make it <laughs> and tell us somebody who can make it with us. And I think once you present a question like that as a collaborative game or a collaborative approach, most people, human psyche wise, they're like, okay, how can I help? And so that was just part of the conversation when we're asking for dessert, we're not just asking, hey, where's the best bakery? We're like, what's a traditional dessert and who makes it best? And also help us connect to them because they're gonna teach us and we're gonna bake with them, you know? So we found, we, I think it was pretty, it was pretty um, supportive. We had a lot of 
I remember, you know, of course, and of course, I'm not, I don't need to sugarcoat. We also had disappointments. We had this one coffee shop, I remember, where we went for two days straight and they were like, yeah, yeah, come back tomorrow. And I was like, okay, tomorrow. And then tomorrow, hey, come back tomorrow. And at some point we were like, okay, tomorrow means no thank you, you know, um, and that's okay. And so we would just, again, yeah, we would ask people to help us. And also we had this very light and playful tone. It wasn't this like scientific approach of, the, the, I tell this to my team members sometimes, but I think people want to help and the way to make them help, the, e the easiest way to make people help is to tell them specifically how they can help you. So when you're gonna go and ask for advice or ask for support, instead of saying like, hey, I need help, be like, hey, this is exactly what I need. What, like I need ABC. Is there something in all of this that you're able specifically to do? And that helps people think, oh, okay, maybe I can connect you to somebody or maybe I can, maybe I know a recipe, maybe I have a kitchen in which to, you know, but like, it's not just me coming like, hi, do this for me. It's like, this is all that I need. Help me, help me get the treasure hunt. <laughs> okay. How, how often did you get lost in translation? Because obviously with all these countries, there's not only language differences, but also cultural differences yeah. all over Europe. So how, how did you deal with that? I think that was not that easy. Um, so I, Anna and I both speak English. I speak French. She speaks German. And we both also speak Spanish, which covered a lot of um, kind of already a lot of surface. Uh, Romania, for example, is a Latin language. I did not know that Romanian. I thought it was going to be a very like Slavic uh, language. Um, but I think for the most part, we got around in English. We definitely started speaking more English and German once we were getting at, at the more East we were getting. Um, also Google Translate, although Google Translate can be a little bit, um, what's the word like, it, it can have mistakes. I remember one time being in a truck with a driver who was telling, you know, we were writing back and forth and I guess Google Translate just didn't work in Polish the way we were expecting it to, but he sent us the, so we were like, okay, can we go to this city and that? And then he hands us the phone and there was his language written. And then there was like, okay, in, in 20 minutes, I'll blow you up. And I was like, I think it's probably he'll drop us off. Like, it probably means that, but Google is <laughs> miscommunicating the word. And so for the whole 20 minutes, we were just like, he's going to drop us off. He's definitely going to drop us off. <laughs> um, and then other moments, there's probably stuff that got lost in translation that I don't know about, you know, on both ends. But um, overall, technology is a great tool for um, communication. And another thing that I sometimes tell my friends who are traveling is like, don't underestimate the power of nonverbal language. Because when there is a will to communicate, there is a way to put your message across. It can be through miming. It can be through pointing things. It can be through drawing. It can be through words and you replace them. And you, there's always a way to put your message across. You know, you just have to be creative about it. 100% agree. Now, with the traveling, what's the biggest challenge on, on the trip? The biggest challenge, which softened over time, is for me personally, uh, not knowing where we'd sleep or go. And then also the notion of dependency. I grew up in a culture where it's like very hard for me to ask for things. So like asking for a cake recipe is fun and there's not that much, like, you know, there's low risk, but having to ask for transportation and housing was very, uh, it confronted me to a lot of my own kind of limiting beliefs of like, oh, I'm, I can't ask people that because they're going to think that I'm I don't know, they're going to feel taken advantage of, or it, it, my ego, right, of, of having to be like, I don't know where I'm sleeping tonight, can you help? Things like that, that was definitely challenging. Um, surprisingly enough, I think people expect, because we were two women, they're like, how was it being women traveling? And I'm, I really want to like talk about or, or help destigmatize that. In a weird way, people were more supportive and protecting of us because we were women. So a lot of the drivers, for example, we always had this question of the hitchhiking drivers. We'd be like, why are you picking us up? And 80% of the time, the answer was, I don't want anything bad to happen to you guys. Which then I'm like, that's interesting because you're scared of the good, of the bad, but you're doing the good thing, you know? So it's very telling for me of just like how as humans, we like, we're scared of the outside world, but at the same time, we're doing the right thing. So it's like, there's more good people out there than there are bad, but we're so scared of the bad that we like end up not focusing on it while we're doing the good thing. It's just, it, I always find that so funny. 
Yeah, 99 point something percent of all humans are good people. There is yeah. just a very small percentage. Yeah, that and we're just... do not need, but I have the same experience. Um, I was an Airbnb host for a long time, and you're mm -hmm. always a little bit of over careful about your guests and um, that nothing happens to them. And on all my travels, I had the same experience. People try really to take care of you and point mm -hmm. you in the right directions, and it's easier than. Um, what people think or what the news wants to make you think now once you were back question is did you start your coffee shop what, what did you do with your recipes yes so we did go so we went to morocco straight after um <clears throat> i strongly believe that if we didn't have we had planned you know to, to go and open a coffee shop we were talking with an investor on, in morocco and in marrakesh i think if we hadn't had that next chapter who knows, I might still be traveling for desserts because like you just, you, you fall into it and you're just like, oh my gosh, there's so much to go discover. But we had an end date, you know, we knew that come December, we were going to go to Marrakesh and open the shop. Um, and so we went to Marrakesh, we started working for about a month on like the plans and imagining what that would look like. And at that point, just completely honestly, what, what happened is during the trip, I think we really learned about like intuition and trusting our feeling around certain things like this. There's, it was like a vibe. I don't, I don't even need to get all LA spiritual on you, but I think that sometimes there's things in life that we perceive and we don't know how to put words on them. And so we had been practicing that more and more throughout the trip. Um, and with this specific person that we were working with, nothing went like wrong, objectively, nothing wrong happened, but it was feeling off. So we decided to not work with him and we started baking from our kitchen. Um, and so I don't know if you'll be familiar or if your audience will be familiar, there's a show in America called Two Broke Girls. And it's these two girls who are baking in their kitchen. They're making cupcakes to try to go and like sell them. And that was us. Like, <laughs> we were in our kitchen making cakes every morning, going and dropping them off to clients and coffee shops and doing the whole like trying to put a business together, going to farmers markets, you know. Um, and so we did that for about mm, six to eight months, maybe like a year up until the end. And at that point, we realized that it's one thing to bake every Sunday for your friends. It's another thing to lead an entire business. Like a bakery is no joke. And I have so much respect for any baker or person who cooks food for the rest of us. Um, so we decided to stop and then we kind of each continued on our, on our journeys. And that was in 2000 and yeah, 2018. Okay. So what was the biggest takeaway from, I think we touched already a little bit on that. What was the biggest takeaway or the big, biggest things that changed you <clears throat> and on as a person or in hindsight from the trip mm -hmm. um curiosity and kindness are contagious 100 percent um it also it was a kind of like everyday exercise that things will work out most times right most times things will work out even if you can't if you don't have the answer in the moment um and the third takeaway is again why i quote bourdain on this but like food is just such a, glue, a social glue and if you come in with curiosity again to kind of do the full circle if you come in with a curiosity about somebody's culture and you ask them about food 99 of the time you're going to get met with a big smile and something like i want to share a meal with you and i want to show you this and that and like that's it, it just it connects us back to like the childlike feeling you know you're not it, it makes life a little bit less serious and big and important so okay <laughs> Come slowly to the end of our podcast. What would be a advice that you would give someone who wants to travel the way you did? Um, mm, that's a great question. An advice that I would give to somebody. Uh, I would say give yourself the tools and the space to really work on your mindset going into it. And again, I'm sounding like a broken record, but stay curious, stay open-minded, be resourceful in terms of like, if you go out thinking that you're are, that you already know what's going to happen and and or, or you want it a certain way like be be realistic about that that like there's so much of life that we don't know and when we go to these new places being able to just be like all right i'm going to show up i'm going to know what i need and also stay super open to connection and to discovery um i think that mindset shift is at the root of everything um yeah that's what i would that's what i would recommend Awesome. Sounds really good. Where can people find out more about you when they want to get in touch with you? Um, that's a good question as well. Right now, I would say through social media. Instagram is kind of where I'm uh, often, as we all are in my generation, just addicted to the phone. Um, and otherwise, I also have my website on which people can send me a little message. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an open door. I love people getting in touch and 
recently somebody actually had heard the story and they were doing a similar trip about coffee and he reached out being like I'm trying to explore every coffee in every world um can we talk and we had a great shot and I love that I thought how fun that we can all inspire each other to go travel that's really fun coffee sounds great my round the world trip was on the the Grido the burger and beer tour so I did a lot of burgers a lot of beer okay that's <laughs> I want to hear about that <laughs> so we're all foodies at the end of the day yes, Sophia thank you so much for your time I will put the links in the show notes that people can reach you if they have any questions and talk soon thank you have a great day you too bye Hey Klaus here, before you leave, I have a question. Are you a traveler? Do you have a favorite travel destination or favorite travel experiences that you would like to share with the world? Then become a guest on the Why We Travel podcast. Simply message me and I will get you all the details for becoming an interview guest and then we take it from there. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode and have a great day.